Hi everyone. I wanted to start this video by thanking everyone for watching my videos on Copula so far and leaving feedback and encouragement and questions. I really appreciate it. All right, so in this lecture, I wanna discuss how to perform inference on Vine Copulas using the PyVine Copulib library. This is in response to a user's question that was asked from the last video. So again, thanks for your questions and keep them coming. So let's start by refreshing ourselves on what we mean by performing inference for a probability distribution. Um, this terminology could mean many different things according to a specific practitioner, but in the context of this video, we mean how do we compute the conditional probability of a certain set of dimensions in the probability distribution given other dimensions? So let's express this more formally. Uh, so suppose that we have a joint distribution, uh, which is a function of two vectors, x and y. Now I wanna stress that x and y are vectors, which is why they're bolded in this representation here. Uh, and so x and y can be many dimensions. Uh, it could be one dimension, it could be 10 dimensions. Uh, this is a general formulation. So now, given a set of values for the vector x, what we wanna do is compute the probability of the vector y. And we can write that as the probability of y given x. Um, so let me just provide an example to kind of make this a little bit more concrete. Suppose we have a joint, a very simple example with two dimensions. Suppose we have a joint distribution of height and weight. And let's say that X is height and Y is weight. Now, what we want to do is in the conditional distribution, what we're computing is for a given height, let's say six feet, X equal to six feet, we want to understand what is the probability distribution of the weight. And we can do this for many different, for all different values of height, for example. Now, th this is a very simple example. We can compute this uh, pretty easily, but now imagine the scenario where we have hundreds of variables where we want to compute the distributions of given another hundred variables of data that we do have. Um, and so as the number of dimensions grows, this becomes a computationally difficult problem. And there are general algorithms such as Markov chain Monte Carlo uh, that are used to tackle problems like this. But for Vine copulas, what we can do is we can use the Rosenblatt transform to compute a limited set of conditional distributions in a more computationally efficient manner. So we'll break that statement apart, uh, but let's first discuss the Rosenblatt transform. This was introduced in 1952 by Professor Rosenblatt, who was at University of Chicago at the time. And what the Rosenblatt transform allows us to do is it allows us to take data generated from a model. Let's define that data to be U. And let's assume that that data has a dependent structure captured by the copula C. Um, and what the Rosenblatt transform allows us to do is it allows us to convert U, which has a dependent structure defined by the copula C, into a new vector V where each V is independent, okay? And we'll understand why the significance of this is to copulas, but uh, think of the Rosenblatt transform R as a function which operates on U and spits out V. But the difference between U and V is that in U, all of the, each of the dimensions, they are related to each other in some way through the copula C, whereas V, they are conditionally independent. Specifically, they're conditionally independent according to this formulation right here. So here we say V of J is equal to C of J, uh, the conditional copula of J given its previous dimensions of the, of the function arguments. And so this is several examples. So we have V of two is equal to the, copula, the conditional distribution of two given one of the same arguments u2 given u1. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, that sounds great, but like, why does this matter to bind copulas? So let's connect this to binds. Um, so feel free to refresh yourselves on bind copulas with the previous video, but just as a brief refresher, recall that binds are factorizations of large probability distributions into products of conditional distributions with a specific structure. So, 
um, when a vine copula is defined, it is defined with a certain structure and it has a certain order. And if we want to use the Rosenblatt transform to compute inference on the vine copula, then we are restricted to subsets of inference that we can compute based on that order. So what do I mean by that specifically? Uh, let's take, let's, let's work through this with an example. Um, in the last video, we had an example where we were modeling the, we were doing two things. One, we had a time series prediction model, which was trying to predict the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Filecoin. And then we had a second Vine Copula model, which was trying to model the interactions or the dependency between the errors in prediction between the Bitcoin price, between Ethereum price and Filecoin price. And we defined this C Vine to model that joint distribution. So I don't wanna repeat myself in terms of discussing this, the mechanics of the time series prediction and, and the copula modeling, but this is, this is the copula model that we built. The rest of this is the same as the last video, so I'll skip it. Feel free to watch it to refresh yourself, but let's go to the part where we have all of the data and we build a copula model on top of it. And recall, we did that with this expression here. Uh, we said, let's build a vine copula with a, with a structure and we define this order in a very specific way such that it, it intuitively and semantically means this diagram, which is what we care about, uh, which defines how we expect the interactions between these distributions to, to be based off of. So now that we have a Vine copula, um, let's look at, remember that I said that the Rosenblatt transform allows us to compute specific um, inferences depending on the copula order. So let's print out the order. Um, and we see that the order is actually what we, what we set it to be, which we expect, but this is a way to, to take a copula object and print out its order. Uh, and so the order is three, two, one. And so what that means is according to this expression up here, let's apply this expression to this copula order here. And what that means is that the, the set of probability, the set of conditional distributions that we can compute is the set of these three, the, is these three right here. So we can compute the probability of U3 less than or equal to U3 given U2 is a certain value and U1 is a certain value. And then we can compute in the same way U2 is less than or equal to U2 given U1 equal to U1 and the probability of U1 less than or equal to U1. And this follows, again, this follows directly from this definition of what the Rosenblatt transform is doing. Now, in terms of what U1, U2, and U3 mean, we defined, we defined it in such a way such that U1 is, represents, U1 or X1 represents uh, the Bitcoin residual, the, the residual of the prediction, er the, basically the re residual of the prediction for Bitcoin. U2 represents the res residual of the prediction for Ethereum, and U3 represents the residual of the prediction for Filecoin. So now that we have this, the, and this is the set of pro possible conditional distributions we can compute, let's, let's do this for two different ones. Let's start with the, with the slightly simpler one where we have probability of U2 less than or equal to U2 given U1 equal to U1. And I've added this note here for clarity, um, but the, the order of the copula and the order in which we input the parameters to compute the Rosenblatt transform. In this library, it's not necessarily intuitive, but they are not the same. It's not the same order. So this is very important. So the order of the inputs to the Rosenblatt function must be inputted as U1, U2, U3. Again, uh, at the risk of belaboring this point, this is not the same as the order of the copula, which is three, two, one. But we need to remember this. And I'll also note here that the output will also be of the same order. The output will be outputted as V1, V2, and V3. And so we need to extract the dimension that we care about in order to be interpreting this in the right way. So in this case, what I've done is if we wanna compute the inference of U2 less than or equal to U2 given U1 equals U1, we configure the U vector as follows. 
Here, we set U1 equal to 0 0.75, which represents the 75th percentile of the residual that the time series prediction engine makes on predicting the return of Bitcoin. Remember that the first argument is U1. And what we're basically asking is, is for that, for that percentile, what does the error distribution of our time series prediction engine make for U2? That is the residual of the Ethereum price. And since we're only concerned with U1 and U2, the, what we put in for U3 doesn't matter here. And so I can configure this to be whatever percentile I want. I just chose 75th as an example. So, uh, and remember that because we're operating in the U space, in the pseudo observation space, this is a rank measure. And that's why this is a percentile. We can, we will convert this back to an actual error value too. So, okay, so we, we define this U simulation. We, we set up U2 to be zero and one because remember the inputs are bounded between zero and one. And so this gives us the entire distribution. Um, and again, U3 doesn't matter. So given all of this, we then say, okay, let's run the Rosenblatt transform. We do it by saying, take the copula object dot Rosenblatt. We provide the input and we get the output vSim. And now again, uh, just to belabor the point here, the output is in order of V1, V2, and V3. What we seek to answer here was we wanted to look at the distribution this of U2. So we need to look at the, the second uh, column in this output of vSim, which is indexed with value one, because remember in NumPy indexing starts at zero. And so what this is showing is this is showing the error distribution, and I plotted this in a histogram and added a KDE line onto it, is this is showing the basically the error distribution of our time series prediction that it makes for U2 in terms of percentiles, remember, because we're in the U space, we're in the pseudo observation space, but we can convert that to normal space by applying the quantile function and we do that. And so what this is showing, this is showing is this 75th percentile error corresponds to an absolute residual of 0 0.02. So given that we made an error in prediction, predicting the Bitcoin price by two cents, um, what is the distribution of error look like for predicting the Ethereum price? And that's what this looks like here. Uh, so now we can do the same thing. Let's do another example. But this time we want to compute the inference for U3 less than or equal to U3, given U2 is a certain value and given U1 is a certain value. Remember, that we are limited because of the copula order and the restriction of the Rosenblatt transform to only to only be able to compute inference on these three specific uh, queries. We, we cannot do any sort of general inference problem. For example, we can't say, what is the probability of U2 less than or equal to U2 given U3 is a certain value and U1 is a certain value? Like we, we can't do that with a Vine Copula and the Rosenblatt transform, we would have to do general integration, but I don't cover that in this video. Um, so in this case, coming back to this example, we're basically running, uh, want to compute this inference and we want to compute it for U3. So we set that value to zero to one. We want to see that what the distribution is, given that we made an error in the 75th percentile for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. What is the distribution of error on Filecoin in the percentile space. So again, we set up our vector. Uh, again, the order here is U0, U1 is correspondent to this Bitcoin. It's not the same as the order of the copula. We set up our vector, we run the transform and we get the outputs. And again, we want the third column now, which is indexed by uh, column two. Uh, so we get this distribution here and what this query manifested itself, if we use the quantile function, is given that the er absolute error of Bitcoin is 0 0.03, 0 0.02, and the absolute error of Ethereum is 0 0.03, what does the error distribution look like for, for Filecoin? And that's what this probability distribution says. So that's it. That's, uh, those are basically two examples of how to run inference with Vine copulas using the PyVine copula lib. Uh, thanks for watching and
Um, I would love to hear your comments on this video or any other suggestions on related topics that you might want to learn about. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.